Welcome to History's Shittiest Disciple. And today we're going to be responding to the Salty Cracker. This is his bit shoot channel. He also has a YouTube channel. And the title is called Megan Fox Raises Her Seven Year Old Sons to Be Vegan Crossdresser. And as you can see in the description, he has an amazing amount of sources and information for the claims that will be made. And no, this is not sarcasm. Sarcasm doesn't exist. You are not real. I am not real. What's going on, everybody? Well, any of you stupid idiots who run to Hollywood to get your political views or, I don't know, ideas on how to run health care or how to raise your kid, you're all a bunch of retards, all right? These Hollywood people are insane. They're crazy people. YouTube content creators, they're crazy. They're crazy people. You should listen to them on their advice on how to raise kids. And while I'm saying this, I'm going to appeal to an audience that already agrees with what I'm saying, and I'm not going to really give great counter-arguments. Look, this is a problem with echo chambers or YouTube. It's easy to get opinions that you already agree with. Celebrities can be right or wrong on how to raise kids, but I think people are all entitled to their free speech, and I think sometimes people can give good advice that are celebrities. But don't get me wrong, a lot of celebrities are detached, delusional idiots. Take a look at this. We're over at Pluralist. Hollywood actress empowers her sons to be vegan by telling them plants have thoughts. Well, Megan Fox, we got a whole article here on how to raise kids. How to raise kids by Megan Fox, one of these super rich elite whammons of power out there who I'm sure doesn't even know her kids. I'm sure she's got an army of nannies and assistants and help over there raising these kids. These kids probably couldn't tell the difference between nanny and mommy if the kids had to choose. Allow me to speak in sarcasm. It's not like anyone actually acquires wealth so they can spend more time with their family and build up their own financial freedom. Some rich people have nannies take care of their kids and they just chase money. Some don't. Some care about their financial freedom. When the Salty Cracker is bringing up the fact that Megan Fox is a wealthy, super rich elite, why I'm going to power out there, what I find really funny is the fact that he's bringing up the fact that she's a whammon, when whammon is a term used to sort of discourage women who are politically correct, hypocrites, bigots, or women that are, women, women that more or less have, let, I guess you could say, less than ideal views within modern day politically correct society. However, the problem is, is, her sex and her gender, Megan Fox, has absolutely nothing to do with wanting to raise her kids to be vegan or the fact that her kid cross-dresses, and you'll see that in the next two videos. Basically, he's bringing up something completely irrelevant to put her down in front of the audience, and it's just poisoning the well. And my big issue with this is if this was, like, reversed, if, if there was a celebrity, a woman celebrity who was criticizing the Salty Cracker, and more or less, one of the first things she said before she had any criticism was how she how the Salty Cracker is a white male successful YouTuber. Or she could just say, um, look here, another successful male YouTuber. If a female celebrity said that in a really disrespectful manner, criticizing the Salty Cracker on something that had nothing to do with his sex or gender, it would come across as very prejudiced. And I think the Salty Cracker thinks he's actually trying to put down Megan Fox for what he perceives to be his bad behavior, but what in actuality is his own prejudice towards Megan Fox and towards particularly women or politically correct people or left-leaning people, which is no surprise because men tend to be more right-leaning and women tend to be more left-leaning, which is the closest thing you could bring up to sex and gender and how it's relevant. But even then, you're playing with identity politics at that point. I can sympathize with why the Salty Cracker might use that term whammon, but the reality is is he's trying to put down for what he believes to be his bad behavior, but in the next two videos you'll see that that's not the case and he's using very fallacious reasoning to come to that conclusion. And at the very beginning of the video, he's already setting up an us versus them mentality. And I just want the audience to click into that. This is where the manipulation sort of starts. But anyway, Megan Fox is going to virtue signal and tell everybody how great she is because she's raising her kids vegan, boys. They're vegans. And listen, you assholes. If you want to be a grown-ass adult and you want to be a vegan, knock yourself out. All, right? all of you people who are doing that, by the way, look like you're about to keel over and die. Which is why you shouldn't put that type of diet on your animals, your pets, and you sh certainly shouldn't be doing that with your kids. Let your kids decide later on. So I'll first address the pets thing. Dogs can be just as healthy on a plant-based diet. I'll put a study up on the screen where dogs actually did better on a plant-based diet. 
I don't know if plant-based diets are better for dogs, and dogs are omnivores. And if you have to own a pet that requires you to go kill lots of other animals or pay for the killing of lots of other animals, here's an idea. Maybe you shouldn't own a pet that requires tons of other animals to die if you've done the research and your animal requires tons of other animals to die. So that means actually reading academic studies, going to the veterinarians, seeking out other expert help, etc. Even if it is the case of which the best diet for your dog is, is to hunt animals down and to eat wild animals, which might not be the case because wild predators would often end up eating animals that are sick from other biohazards such as parasites or other diseases, thus increasing the strength of the prey tribe. So in other words, kind of like diseases from one animal to another, like Ebola, like COVID. But if you're talking about your pet and what diet's healthiest, you're going to have to compare what most people would do, which is buy animal flesh from the supermarket in comparison to, let's say, processed animal-based products such as kibbles and bits for your you know, dog, cat, whatever. And you have to compare that to a synthetic plant-based alternative, which most people would probably feed their pet if I had to take a guess. So even if it is the case that let's say eating, you know, feeding your animal, let's say raw meat was the best thing for it, like raw animal flesh from the convenience store, from like Walmart or whatever, that's still not to say that's better than the synthetic alternative. And then there's also a plant-based alternative that you have to keep in mind. So keep in mind, what is natural isn't always what's healthiest for your pet. Like there's lots of things that aren't natural, such as medicine for humans. That doesn't mean that it's not bad for us. You know, if it wasn't for antibiotics, a lot of people would die. But if you're going to make your animal plant-based, do your own research and make sure you do so responsibly to minimize risk. I'm not super educated on the subject, but I do believe dogs do better than cats on a plant-based diet. And as of everything right now, people that feed their pet a whole food diet tend to do worse. And this one article from a veterinary website sums up what I've been researching for the last two years. There's conflicting evidence on the subject of pets being healthy on a plant-based diet. However, it is possible, and if you are going to put your pet on a plant-based plant -based diet, do it the right way and seek out expert opinion, expert help, and make sure they get you your pet gets all the nutritional requirement it needs. But understand, some people's pets, like I said before, have allergies to meat-based foods. Maybe I didn't say it before, but reality is that some people have no choice but to feed their dogs or cats a plant-based diet because of allergies. And when it comes to the subject of vegans peeling over, Salty Cracker doesn't offer any evidence. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Go look at the Game Changer movie. Plenty of vegan athletes that are healthy on a plant-based diet. Nate Diaz from the OC, when he was fighting, he primarily ate a plant-based diet. Patrick Mamoumier, one of the strongest men in the world, ate a primarily plant-based diet. Vegans tend to have lower rates of inflammation, heart disease, kidneys, uh, sorry, kidney disease, cancer, and they tend to actually be overall at a healthier BMI. Same with vegetarians. When it comes to dairy, people who don't, people who consume dairy tend to have a higher rate of bone fracture. And among studies where they argue that you should still consume dairy and you shouldn't, they both agree that dairy is highly correlated with bone fractures and there's a very good possibility. It's because of the chemicals that are in dairy. And when it comes down to it, <clears throat> Dairy in and of itself is correlated with a few different forms of cancer. The problem is with all these animal-based products is they have nutrition in them that can ha perhaps help your body with certain forms of health problems, but at the same time, in and of itself, the package, aka dairy and meat or animal products, aren't exactly the best package for your health. It's not exactly the best vehicle in order to become a healthy individual especially when one of the leading causing killers in North America is heart disease. When it comes down to it, cholesterol, your body makes cholesterol. You do not need to get cholesterol from animal-based products. Low-density liptin is found in animal-based products. Something that is highly correlated with heart disease and is believed to be a main causer is saturated fat, which is highly found in animal products. If you look at most plant-based meats, which I am not arguing is a health food, because you have to look at all the chemicals in there, but plant-based meats have drastically less fat than animal-based meats. Way less fats on average. I, I, I've never found an actual plant-based meat that had more fat than their animal flesh counterpart. And when I'm referring to fats, if you haven't been looking on the screen, I'm referring to saturated fats as well. So there's a lot more saturated fats within animal-based products. I have 
never found a vegan alternative having more saturated fat. And on top of that, vegans are more likely to be at a healthier body range in comparison to omnivores. A low-fat plant-based diet removing artificial sugars is considered by the vast majority of academics to be the best diet for preventing heart disease and is argued that it's capable of reversing some heart diseases. And I'm not going to go into that because there's a debate in the academic community if it can or can't. A low-fat plant-based diet has shown to be highly correlated with decreasing inflammation for people with arthritis, and it's very promising. I suffer from arthritis when I went vegan. I was much better. The World Health Organization ranks processed meats as a group 1 carcinogen. Up there with smoking, not as bad as smoking, obviously. Carcinogen means causes cancer. And red meats is considered to be a probable level 2 carcinogen, meaning it probably most likely causes cancer. You want to know a good way to not get type 2 diabetes? Going vegan! Because vegans are correlated with lower rates of type 2 diabetes. Here's why you should feed your animal a plant-based diet, and I wanted to tackle the subject. No matter what you feed your animal, if you feed your animal a plant-based diet, you're forcing that view of them. If you feed them a diet with animal-based products, you're forcing their, your view on them. And when it comes down to it, animals are not the same level as moral agents as humans. They don't have the same level of moral philosophical complexity and understanding as we do. That's why we don't hold animals as the same way in the court of laws we do humans. So let's just say in a hypothetical, your pet, your friend's pet, your auntie's pet, this pet could also be healthy on a herbivore plant-based diet. However, their owner decides to feed them an omnivore diet. And let's say tomorrow this pet, some, some pet that you know, all suddenly tomorrow became as smart as Albert Einstein or near genius level of intelligence. They were philosophically capable of understanding philosophy like we do. What do you think that pet would think of their owner if they found that their owner was feeding them animal-based products simply because they actually thought that view was best for them when in reality it didn't really matter as much and their owner was feeding them animal-based products purely off ignorance? What do you think that pet would actually think if they found out their, their owner did absolutely no research into the amount of suffering that other animals have to endure just to feed it food based off ignorance. And even if it was the case that the animal did need meat, what do you think the animal would think of their owner if they found out that their owner didn't do any research at all? They just did blindlessly what the masses do. I don't think that pet would think very highly of their owner. As well, a vegan plant-based diet is just as healthy for an adult as it is for a child or a pregnant woman. A vegan plant-based diet is healthy for all people at all stages of life. Just look at the screen, folks. Just look at the studies. So here's the thing. Parents have the responsibility to make the best choice for their children. So why not feed your children a diet that is correlated with better health outcomes where a small animal doesn't have to die for its flesh or secretion? And when it comes to the subject of feeding your kids a better diet and making good moral choices for your kids, why not make a good moral choice that would decrease your water footprint that would decrease your carbon footprint that would internationally decrease the cost of food thus making food internationally cheaper around the world and some studies claim that if everyone went if everyone went vegan that it would end world hunger i don't know if that's true i'm very skeptical of that but the reality is is you could make a simple better moral choice that is not only better for your family but is better for the world as a whole but I presume Megan Fox is raising her kids to be vegan because she doesn't like the idea that animals have thoughts and doesn't want to kill an animal. Okay, but now she's telling her kids that plants also have the same thoughts. And so, what the fuck is left on the menu for Megan Fox and her kids? Are these bitches eating rocks and tree bark? I don't understand what's going on over here. Uh, this entire article is insane. She talks about how, you know, they don't just rip flowers out. I don't let my kids rip out flowers from the ground so we can put them in a vase on the table. But you'll eat them, but you won't eat meat because you think meat also has th thoughts and feelings. I, I, completely inconsistent, which is why you shouldn't look for any of these numbnuts on how to raise your kids. Lefties, don't go to Hollywood to learn how to raise your kids. Okay, so just with a quick Google search, this is something that I popped up when I searched Jainism because I remember a lot of people telling me that Jane's practice causing the least amount of harm to, to plants, animals, and nature as possible. The principle of nonviolence includes doing no harm to humans, plants, animals, and nature. 
This is something I found from the NationalGeographic.org. My whole point is there's other philosophical frameworks that require people to cause as little harm and suffering as possible, um, depending on that person's morals and, you know, lifestyle and conclusions, and this could lead to someone following a vegetarian, vegan, or a freegan diet, whatever diet they can, in order to cause the least amount of pain and suffering. Somebody could value the fact that animals have a greater level of sentience and consciousness than plants do, and for that reason, preferring to be on a plant-based diet because of their value and or consideration for sentient beings and consciousness. Now, with that being said, plants are not sentient. Plants do not feel pain. And someone who believes that plants feel pain are most likely a little crazy. But even with that being said, just because it's a little crazy, that doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily lead to a more philosophically just world or a world that would actually be better. Because 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 for all we know, perhaps maybe plants do feel pain. And so, so for somebody to avoid harming plants while well, at the same time preferring to eat a plant-based diet, they would actually reduce the amount of suffering, not only for, for animals that we know can suffer, but could potentially be reducing suffering for even more sentient life if plants are sentient, which they are most likely not. Something else to keep in mind is, like I brought up before, the Oxford estimate that around 80% of the world's land mass makes about 20% of the world's food, which is animal agriculture. Something that's easy to forget within that statistic is that 20% of the world's land mass is crops made for non-animal agriculture. So with that being said, animal agriculture requires vastly more crops in order for something to be created. Um, for example, plant-based alternative meats require vastly less water, vastly less land, and vastly less energy. Usually only about, I don't know, anywhere between, let's say, 90% less, 70% less, 80% less, and same thing with plant-based milks. Now, with that being said, you might think, oh, well, I could use grass-fed farms. I could eat completely grass-fed animals. Well, okay, if it is the case that plants are sentient, what do you think cows and other herbivore animals are going to eat? Plants. They're going to eat plants for fucking years. You know, a year or two or three or four or at least a few months before you go off and slaughter them so you can then eat the said animal. So with that being said, it would require less calories, less energy just to eat the plants in general and require less suffering even if it is the case even if it is the case that plants do feel pain. So basically what I'm saying is, an animal eating fucking plants, taking that energy and shitting it out, there is a loss in calories and energy. And it's more efficient just to eat the plants or to turn the plants into vegan meats or whatever the fuck you want to use to replace your animal flesh and animal secretions when it comes to actually reducing suffering, even if it is the case that plants could feel pain. For everyone watching, thank you so much. And next time, there will be part two out of two. So with that being said, have an amazing 24 hours. So your father left you to pursue better love And now you're dumb opinions I was probably criticized Bob himself with alcohol and suicidal crimes